Welcome to my study. For those of you interested in this sort of thing, uh, this sort of thing is my impression of the Chris Reeve Sabenza 31 after owning one for four months. Um, it'll also be a little bit of a comparison with um, my experience in using it over the past four months um, compared to that of a Sabenza 21. Um, this is the second in a set of two videos that I had planned. The first video was a physical comparison as opposed to this, this one, which is the practical comparison. So in that video, I compare all the physical differences and design changes between the Sabenza 31 and the 21, and you can find a link to that video in the description. Um, I will make two quick uh, addendums, addenda to that video, or corrections. Um, the first one is about the blade width of the small versus large. Um, now I said that the blade widths on the Sabenza 31 and 21 are the same, and same with the small and large. Now, this, the small 31 and 21 uh, are basically a scaled down version of the large 21 or 31. The only differences between a 21, a large and a small, or a 31 large and a small are the pocket clips, which are identical size, so it covers more of the handle on the small. And I said that the blade thickness or, or width, the blade thickness on the large and the small is identical between the large and the small. Um, so in proportion, you get a thicker blade on the small, um, which is true, but there is a thickness uh, difference between the larges and the small. And I, I was incorrect because I was reading the old fashioned measurements. In old fashioned, um, they are both uh, 0.12 inches wide, but in metric, they are uh, 0 0.03 millimeters difference. The large is 3.07 millimeters. The small is 3.04 millimeters. So 0 0.03 uh, thinner uh, on the small. Uh, so in old fashioned, that's uh, 0 0.1195 inches on the small as opposed to 0 0.12 on the large. So 0 0.0005 inches. So it is a small difference, but it is a difference. And I wanted to make sure that I uh, corrected that because I like to be accurate. Um, and I did say it incorrectly in the first video. Um, the other thing is that in the first video, I spoke quite a bit about um, a change that is on the finger side of the handle um, of the uh, 31 compared to the 21, that the, the handle follows this arc uh, up to about here and then is flat to where it gets to the finger groove and that this flat section has been removed on the 31 and that the handle follows an, a smooth arc from the butt end corner to the finger groove corner. Um, uh, so I was curious and I spoke uh, a, a bit about uh, how this flat section uh, was also present on the previous uh, design before the 21 that used this handle shape, uh, the classic. I've since found out that, that that flat goes all the way back to the first production Sebenzas. So the P Sebenzas, the first ones that were made on CNC machines had that. Um, so I just thought I would, I would uh, add that um, to this video to make sure that uh, anyone that was interested knew it. Now, was it present on the previous versions, the handmade ones? I, I uh, sent a message uh, asking about that to someone that collects uh, Sabenzas and has Sabenzas going back to the handmade uh, era, and uh, he wasn't able to get back to me in time. Um, but it's obviously a deliber deliberate design feature that has now been removed. Um, uh, deliberate since they started making on CNC at least. Um, so with that sort of uh, background to the last video um, cleared up, uh, let me just uh, start my four month experience with this Sabenza 31 by um, clarifying or, or setting the ground rules here. So this is the only 31 I own. It's a large, it's not inlaid. Um, and it's only one. I haven't tried any other. So my my experience is based on this knife and this knife alone. So you can take um, that in into consideration uh, as to whether what I say applies to all thirty ones or just this one. Um, also, it's you know it's my experience in my hand with how I hold a knife and how I use a knife. So you have to keep that in mind that. 
I'm not a professional knife reviewer. I'm talking about my experience with this particular 31. Um, now, uh, I do not have an inlaid one. I, I uh, plan on getting one. Um, I think I'm going to get two, a large and a small. Um, uh, I have my 21 large drop point and my 21 small uh, in Singo, which are sort of my daily carries. And I want to get the reverse uh, in the 31 eventually and get a, a small drop point with my Carta inlay and a large uh, in Singo with... Um, uh, my card inlay um, but those are at least a year or two away in my uh, my knife purchasing uh, grand plan but I did see uh, on Instagram that Chris Reeve is right now making the 31s with Makassar ebony inlays and they are looking gorgeous and I'm thinking mm, I might be getting a small with a Makassar um, ebony inlay uh, but uh, the point here is that I may do a third video uh, in this series way down the road when I get um, uh, some inlaid 31s to compare but in the meantime check out Eugene's video I'll link it in the uh, description where he compares a large uh, Sabenza 21 with, in, with micarta inlays to a large Sabenza 31 with micarta inlay um, and he can give you a little bit more view. I will speculate a bit about the about the use and field them, but I don't have the practical experience. So I would recommend uh, having a look at his video uh, once you're done looking at mine, of course. Um, now, the other thing is that uh, you should know how I carried and used this knife if you're going to... Uh, weigh my opinions or my thoughts uh, objectively. Um, so this is my secondary uh, carry. Um, I always carry either this knife or this knife. Most often, this is my favorite, my small uh, Insingo 21 with my Carta inlay. This is in my pocket every day in the city. Um, it gets replaced in my front pa uh, pants pocket with the large um, drop point, uh, my card inlay, uh, when I go out on a hiking trail, uh, a little bit less, uh, 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 urban, uh, let's say. Um, so it's not my hard camping knife, but it's my outdoor hiking, uh, that sort of use. Um, so this knife, uh, with the exception of being carried in my front pocket a few times, just to, just to have, so, ha have that experience. Um, usually this was in my jacket pocket as sort of a backup to either this one or this one. So it was used less often than it probably could have if it was a primary user. Um, and uh, I would say it's probably been used roughly once or twice a day since I got it for light use, like cutting cardboard, cutting cord, things like that. Um, so it's not, you know, I haven't been building houses with it or anything like that. So keep that in mind. Um, so let's get into uh, the actual experience of using it. Um, the So let's, I'll talk about sort of the blade and lock operation and the actual use of the, the working part of the knife first. Um, I will say as far as cutting, um, I've cut cardboard, I've cut uh, cords with it. Um, I've opened envelopes with it. Uh, I think I, I had to put a notch in some wood with it at one point. Um, I have not had to sharpen it. Um, I think I stropped it once. It's still got the factory edge and it's still very sharp. Um, but I, I, uh, I would say there's no difference in performance with a 21 and there shouldn't be because it's the same blade shape, same steel. So there you are. Um, now, those of you that are curious how it might perform with the new S45 VN steel, uh, once they exhaust the S35 VN that this is made of, they will be switching to S45, uh, S45 VN. And um, uh, there's an article by Piotr, which I will link in the video description that you can read. He had a Chris Reeve heat treated uh, S45 VN blade on an uh, Inkosi that he had for a year. Uh, and he shares his experience in sharpening and the different types of use. So um, that might give you some more insight is to, into what the new blade steel will be like. But as far as I'm concerned, as far as cutting performance, no real difference. Um, I just want to mention about the jimping. I noted in the uh, first video that the jimping is identical on the 21 blade and 31. It's, um, you know, 21 grooves, 31 ridges. Um, I will note that the 
um, the actual, I, because I don't use the knives at the same time in both hands and compare the actual feel of the jimping, I did notice that the, the jimping on the 31 is a little, just a slight less amount of friction than on the 21. It, I think that the either the teeth on the 21 are a little bit sharper or a little bit deeper. Um, and so it, there's just a little bit more uh and this, this, this is gross but my hands are dry from washing them a million times in the plague here um but uh there is a little bit more grip and i i verified by tr trying my other t large 21 drop points and and the the jimping on those seems uniform so the little less grip just a smidgen on the 31 um and i can't comment on different blade types one thing i learned uh, my first ever Sabenza was a small 21 drop point with Coco Bolo inlay. And I, this was the only uh, Sabenza I owned for, you know, years, a uh, couple, you know, almost three years, uh, three and a half. And I never knew there was a difference in jimping until I got the small uh, in single blade. And then I discovered, oh, it has more grooves. It has more teeth. They're finer and it's much more grippy. Um, and I just never expected that the jimping on, on Sabenzas would change with blade type. So um, I cannot comment on what the 31, uh, and I said the, the, this is on the small. Uh, the large 21 has much finer jimping than the smalls. So we'll see what the Insingo blades and the Tonto blades are like as far as uh, jimping when uh, they do start coming out. Um, now, the next thing uh, I should talk about is the detent. Um, and I'm gonna com compare, I mean, I spoke in the last video about how, well, you've got your ceramic ball, which is your, your lock interface, which is also your detent, uh, compared with the ceramic ball on the 21, which is just your detent. It's a much smaller ball, much smaller hole in the handle. Um, what I have found is that the actual opening of the knife, like operating, that initial push of the blade takes a little bit more force uh, than on a 21. Um, and I've tried this across um, my smoothest 21s, which this is this is one of them, the, this and its twin brother, um, which is the, the natural micarta with raindrop Damascus blade. They were both made on the same day. They have this, this very, very light detent. It still holds the blade in, but it's very light and takes almost nothing to, to open it. But the Thunderbird, um, you know, is a little bit heavier, it takes a little bit heavier thumb to operate. And my Paisley, whoa, a good way to damage my nice, uh, CG, uh, <laughs> um, uh paisley but um yeah this has, probably has the toughest detent or hardest detent i wouldn't say tough because it's not hard to operate it just takes a little bit more force but this was made two years earlier um so i would say that the 31 takes about the same amount of pressure or even a teensy bit more than my toughest 21 and i i compared it also to my Sabenza 25 which also has the ceramic ball uh, lock, which is also used as the detent, and it opens easier. It, it, it takes less thumb pressure. In fact, this one I would put on a par with my Paisley uh, as far as thumb pressure. So they can be equal. I think maybe this needs a little bit more break-in time, uh, although it's, this knife blade has been cycled at least 5,000 times. Um, the uh, But it's just something to be aware of, and I think it's just because the detent ball is a bit bigger and it goes a bit deeper into a bigger hole so it takes just a little bit more push to get it out not hard to operate not at all it's just a thing and i, I wanted to make note of it um the next thing i wanted to do is um you know the, the talk about the opening action well that comes down to your washers and your lube and just like any other sabenza large or small different blade type 21 or 31 you get that same consistent, um, smooth feeling. It's not free. You, you couldn't just sort of push it and it would open on its own, but 
uh, it's a consistent pressure the whole way. If you use the Chris Reeve lube uh, or a similar lube on it, it's going to be smooth and constant. There's no resistance uh, or any increase or decrease in pressure needed. It's this, it's consistent, feels great. It's one of the things people love about their Sebenzas, and there's no real change, uh, no change at all uh, between that and the, and the 21. So, uh, you know, if you if you're looking for that smooth Sebenza action. It's there, you, you know, uh, no change on that. Um, the next thing is lockup. People tend to uh, get all wrapped up about lockup and how far is the lock across the blade, okay? Um, you see here on the, the, my 31, it looks like the lock is about 80% of the way across the blade. So if you look at the width of the blade, uh, and the width of the lock bar, where is the edge of the lock bar? It's about 80% of the way across the blade. That's what people are talking about when they're talking about lockup. Um, but that's not exactly correct. Um, and people get worried if the lockup is too far one way because they think, oh, it's going to wear out faster and eventually hit the other side of the handle. Or if it's too far the other way, they're like, oh, it's not going to hold the blade if I am chopping down a tree um, and it'll fail. So they want it to be like at 50%. Well, sure. Um, anywhere from 50 to 70%, you're probably good. Even a little bit less than 50, I wouldn't worry about it myself. Um, but let's talk about the lockup uh, on a 31 uh, briefly. Um, on a 21, because it's a, the titanium lock bar is what's hitting the blade, you can look at the edge, the inside edge of the lock bar. Uh, sorry, this edge, this inside edge, and that's where you can read your lockup. So you can see like this one's about 70%, uh, percent, 65, 70% of the way across the blade. Okay, because you just look at the flat edge of uh, this flat edge of the lock bar. On the 31, you can't do that because uh, the titanium lock bar is not what's hitting the blade. Um, here's a diagram I drew, <laughs> uh, my great artistic skill. Um, this is the tip of your lock bar, okay? So this, from basically from here forward, is what I've enlarged here. Um, so you have your, your, your ball sticks out but you can see that the center of the ball is not in line with that edge, which is what you would use to judge on a 21. You're looking at that center. And that center uh, is roughly, if you drew a line here, it's this distance is about a quarter of the width of the entire lock bar. So uh, when you're eyeballing it, look, because you can't see down, this ball is hidden in the dark, down in the dark there in the in the recesses of the knife so just just subtract a quarter of the width and that's where your lock is hitting and so you know your blade is gonna be like that sort of thing um great i should have drawn, drawn the blade in ahead of time but just keep in mind so it's about a quarter and and uh so it, given that you you look at this one again and you're like oh well it's like right at like 50 percent then uh, uh once you take that into account the other thing is and you saw when i took apart the knife is that you see the actual groove where your your uh ceramic ball is hitting the handle so you actually see where the end of your groove is and that's where your lockup ends so like joe going by the groove on this knife it's probably at a 60 percent lockup because that's as far as it wears um and uh uh people will worry about like over the life of the knife is the lock gonna wear the steel and eventually move over well, yeah, but remember, if you saw when it's apart, that that surface, that lock interface is slanted. It's not flat. So it gets harder and harder to wear the more that the further the lock uh, moves across it. So um, this is a lifetime lock, both on the 21 and the 31. Um, so it's not something I would worry about. But I just wanted to discuss uh, lockup. Um, uh, and how to interpret it. And the other guideline for Sebenzas, both both 31 and 21, is if you want to judge if you have a correct lockup or the, the lockup that the factory, the workshop at Chris Reeve Knives prefers, is you look at, um, oh, I'll use my pencil, um, look at this chamfer. So on my diagram, this line here, the top flat, this is obviously the chamfer where it slants down. 
Um, so this chamfer line right here, if that lines up with the edge of the handle when the lock is is operational or, or holding the blade, so if the if that lines up with that edge, then you've got um, a Chris Reeve workshop lock up that, and you're fine. So hopefully that'll settle that. Uh, now, um, as far as the lock, um, the lock feel and operation, this is where I had my biggest. Uh, well, my, one of my two biggest issues with the knife is that this knife, and if you look at the video when I first uh, received this knife, my arrival and first impressions video, there was a little bit of lock stick, which is when you push the, the lock bar after opening the knife, you can even hear now, there's just a slight little click. It, it takes a little bit of stickiness to get a to get that lock bar moving it has to overcome some resistance and then it kind of it kind of sticks and then starts moving and i had that lock stick out of the box brand new and it was a bit annoying but i knew from past experience uh like my first uh 21 which had horrible lock stick of course that's not a ceramic ball interface that's a titanium but this would barely move i, I could barely budge it uh and now it's like butter um but like I said, three and a half years of being broken in. So this had lock stick when it was new. And you can still hear is a little bit of it there. Um, and it got worse as the knife was being used. And um, eventually, uh, and I can maybe throw up the photo, I found that there was a little divot in the steel on the lock bar. Uh, or sorry, on the blade, that the, the lock bar, the ceramic ball was sitting in this little divot. And so what I figure was going on is every time I tried to move that to unlock the knife, I had to overcome the lip of that little divot. Um, and it was annoying. And the more I operated the knife, the worse that stick felt. And what I figured out was happening is that it, it was slowly breaking in and it was wearing that groove. Um, and it was shaving just a little bit of metal and that the more metal that was sitting on the blade tang, the rougher and harder it was to move that lock bar. And then I would wipe it with a uh, microfiber cloth or with uh, uh, a damp paper towel. I would wipe off the, the lock face and then it would, it would still stick, but it would be smoother for a bit. And then the more I operated it, the rougher it would get. Um, and so I ended up every evening I would sit and uh, watching television or whatever and I would I would operate the lock uh, like that a hundred times with my left hand and a hundred times with my right hand and I did that for like <laughs> more than a month so that's why I, when I said earlier that this this action has been operated over 5,000 times I know that because I was trying to break in the lock and sort of smooth out that lock stick and I, I was basing that on my experience with the Sebenza 25 which has the same exact type lock and this is very smooth um, and so I knew it would smooth out it just needed that that initial break in and so now it's very nearly gone um, still there a little bit but this sort of poisoned me against the knife. Uh, I was really not pleased with the design. And I, I have these 21s that are like butter opening and closing. And there's no resistance whatsoever. And I thought, well, you know, it is possible to have lock stick with a ceramic ball interface lock. Uh, and even, you know, Tim Reeve, uh, Chris Reeve Knives, uh, has talked about it, uh, even in reference to the 31 in the design of the knife. It is possible to get lock stick with a ceramic ball interface. They designed to minimize that or the chances of it happening to eliminate it, but it can't be eliminated in every case. And I've talked to guys that got knives made the same day, the same two day batch, uh, uh, and they have, they say theirs are smooth as butter. So I just happened to get the one that came off the line a little bit rough. And, uh, like I said, it's close to having worked its way out right now. In fact, after I filmed the first video of these two, um, I found that, uh, it was almost entirely gone. I put it together at the end of that video and I operated it afterwards and it was like, really close to nothing so I'm, I'm close and I'm feeling a lot better about the knife but it was something that that bothered me um, but one thing on the plus side is you know I spoke about the difference in difference in the uh, chamfer on the lock bar uh, where you push it 
uh, in the finger groove and also about the clip being off the lock bar and it is definitely easier to operate the, the lock bar or more pleasant. I don't think the, pr the pressure is that much different between the 21 and the 31, but the actual moving of the lock bar operating the knife is a little bit you do notice a little bit of a difference uh, in ease in doing it on the 31. Um, I spoke about the noise of opening, how the, the, the 31 gives you uh, one click on opening because there's no detent ball and lock uh, being separate, as opposed to the 21 where you get the click of the detent ball leaving the blade and the lock engaging. And um, not that I'm operating in a stealth environment. I actually enjoy the, 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 the sensory aspects of the knife, the look, the feel, the sound. Um, so I actually, I kind of enjoy that, that two click experience. It, I've heard other people in other videos refer to it as a, as a bank vault sound, like that ka-chunk sound. Um, so from a purely uh, subjective point of view, um, I like the sound of the 21 better. Um, I also find that the 31 can be louder, but it's all about how you hold your hand around the handle. If you hold it tight, it'll be quieter. Um, and also if I operate with my left hand when there's, there's absolutely nothing touching the lock bar, it has a bit of a, a little bit of a metallic tang to it. Um, if you care about the uh, sensory experience with your knives, um, that's something to be aware of. Um, but it does feel solid though. Like I like that solid thunk. So take that as you want. Um, another thing people t are always concerned about is centering. Well, four months of operation, it's still, you know, the blade is centered, dead center, uh, taking it apart and put it together. Probably, I don't know, six or seven times now um and uh still dead center but with all chris reeve knives they leave the workshop dead center or as close to it as uh to be negligible um so um i have nothing really to say about that um thumb studs i will mention that i should have mentioned in the first video that the thumb studs have not changed from the 21 to the 31 some people wish they had changed them because people that are used to different brands of knives do not like this uh, sort of uh, very pyramidal pointy shape. I find it painful. Um, the only thing I could say about that is it doesn't bug me because I've owned a Sebenza for years now uh, and I know how to put my thumb on it. I know what angle to push it. Um, so it causes me no distress. I mean, even though I'm in the middle of the plague and washing my hands like 8 million times a day, my skin's really dry. So they're probably at their most uh uh sensitive as far as dry skin etc and I, I i'm not having any issue with the thumb stud so um anyone that has an issue with the sabenza thumb stud it, it, it's the same uh, issue you would have had before my advice is just um borrow a knife practice and once you learn how to use it it, it the the complaint will disappear um now, there's one other issue I should talk about before I finish talking about the blade and the operation, and that is sort of the the little elephant in the room about the Sebenza 31, which I wouldn't have even been aware of if I hadn't been a member of the community, but people have been talking about lock rock on the Sebenza 31. Um, I'm not going to demonstrate it because I don't want to uh, uh, aggravate that little cup or a little divot in my blade tang that I mentioned, um, which I think is almost gone. Um, but uh, basically you can Google it uh, or YouTube search for Sebenza 31 lock rock and you'll see people um, putting their knives on tables and pushing down on the top of the blade and you'll see the blade wiggle. Or you can even do it by holding the handle and pressing with your thumb. Um, I would not have been aware of this issue if someone hadn't posted a video about it in, a, in uh, the Chris Reeve Knives community. Um, it was about two and a half months after I, I owned this one. Um, so I took mine out and I tried that. And yes, I could push the blade and make it move a little bit. Um, 
I wouldn't have known about that to this day because I don't push that hard on my blade for any, I don't have any reason to. Uh, and when I use the knife, I cut putting pressure up on the blade instead of down on the top of it. So I, I would have sort of gone throughout my life without knowing about it if I hadn't been a member of the community. So um, there's been a lot of discussion about it and uh, really it's a non-issue. Um, all Chris Reeve knives have that. Um, there's a difference though between lock rock and lock flex. And this is a problem, not a problem, but a, an issue of lock flex. And let me explain. Uh, in the last video, I spoke about the triangle of pressure that holds a knife open. Okay, in one corner, you have your lock bar hitting the tang of the blade uh, and putting pressure on the blade to hold it open. On the other opposite corner, you have the tang of the blade hitting a stop pin. Um, and that's keeping the pressure on the other side of it, where in the middle you have the pivot that the knife blade swings on. Um, so lock rock is when you have a gap between either the lock and the blade or the stop pin and the blade, so you can wiggle the blade back and forth. The, once it's locked, there is no wiggle. I can't wiggle it, okay? I have to actually grab the handle hard in my hand and push down with my thumb or put it on a table and push down. So if you look at this part of the knife, okay? I drew a diagram. There's there's your lock bar uh, with the, with the um, ceramic ball sticking out and there's your blade. So you have to have a situation where the edge of the blade, okay? It's hidden by the handle on the actual knife, but this is what it looks like inside, where there's an actual gap. Now, I've exaggerated the size of the gap. It can just be a hair gap. But as, if there's a gap, then you can pull on the tip of your blade, wiggle it back and forth. That is lock rock, okay? This is not doing that. Here's what's happening here, okay? You're in full contact with the blade. Your ceramic ball is contacting the edge of the blade. Um, now, I'm going to demonstrate with my finger, actually. So imagine my finger is your lock bar with the ceramic ball, and my hand here is your blade. So when you're pushing down on the top of the blade, okay, you're, you're pushing it to rotate on that ball. And, and see my finger, it, it acts as a pivot, and the, and the lock bar flexes upwards. So it flexes a bit like that, okay? The ball doesn't budge. It's hard into the, into the steel of the blade that lock's not going to fail it's just flexing the bar a little bit and this happens on all chris reeve uh knives um even with the titanium interface but on the 25 uh on the Enkosi, on the umnumzan they all have a little bit of lock bar flex also it's different knife to knife there's other people that have sabenza 31s um even again some from the same batch as mine and they don't they they don't get this effect um, so is it something to worry about? My opinion, no. As I said, I wouldn't have known about the problem if someone hadn't mentioned it. Um, I don't use my knife by putting pressure down on the top. I cut with the cutting edge, which puts pressure up from the bottom. So I don't think it's an issue. Um, but I wanted to address it because it seems to be all that anybody that has, uh, uh, time to, uh, critique, um, knives seems to be very concerned about. My opinion, not a concern. And like I said, I've had it for four months. Uh, never, never would have known. Okay, enough about that. I wasted too much time about it. Let's, uh, and I think that covers everything about the, the, the blade and, and its operation. Um, so now let me talk about the handle, which is more about ergonomics and, and, and the fit, uh, in the hand. Um, and uh, as, a, as, as far as the sensory experience goes, if you look in the light, okay, every batch of Sabenzas is a little bit different uh, because of the sand and the sandblasting machine. Um, it can be a rougher texture or smoother, but even the color of the handle. And I, I, one thing I really like about my 31 is that the, the color is a little bit bluer, whereas some of the, the other, um, uh, 21 and even the, the 25 I have, there's a little bit more of a warmer scale of color, like, uh, um, to the, to the titanium. And I, I do like this. It has this little, it's very subtle, but it's this grayish blue 
hint, uh, and I really like that about, about this. Um, the actual texture, um, when I got it, uh, was really crispy, uh, um, gritty, uh, titanium sandblast, uh, which whenever I unbox or receive a, a, a Chris Reeve knife, um, I always say, you know, appreciate that because it's going to smooth out very quickly, very quickly. Um, so appreciate that, that sort of, uh, gritty, uh, sparkly appearance when you first get it. So now after four months, um, you know, and this was very gritty, sorry, I will say, because there was a point where I could run my hand down the handle and I'd actually feel my fingerprint catch on a little, a little bump in the sandblasting, which has now smoothed itself away. Um, but now after four months, that grittiness has gone away and this, and I, I never had a plane before. Uh, now I have the Thunderbird, but that only arrived six weeks ago, uh, or less. And, uh, it already came very smooth, but, but, uh, this surprised me is how velvety it feels now. It's l literally, um, it's, it's more grippy than micarta. Micarta is cloth, uh, it's, you know, and resin. Um, but it actually, um, is the, the micarta is smoother than the titanium, but it's a velvety feel now. It's literally like the cloth uh, velvet. Um, and it's, it surprised me. I never knew it would feel like that. So I can now see, I can now see the attraction to the plain handled Sabenzas, uh, because it really feels, really feels great. I mean, uh, so that's, you know, if I'm going to talk about my sensory perception, you know, the, the look of it and the feel of it are, are great. Uh, no comment on the taste or the smell. Uh, uh, <laughs> um, but let's talk about the actual uh, experience in the hand. And and uh, I want to spend a couple minutes on this um, because um, I, I think the way that you see knives held in videos, and I've done it before in, in videos like when when my um, Insingo Small 21 arrived, um, uh, you know, I was talking about how it fits in my hand and how I hold it. And I, I always seem to dem people seem to demonstrate in videos, like holding tight around it and putting your thumb on the jimping and this is how you cut. And I've paid attention to myself for the last month because I knew I was going to make this video and not even with my, my folding knives, pocket knives, but with the knives I use in the kitchen, paring knife, whatever, paying attention to how I use a knife. Um, and I very seldom grip it tight and put my thumb on the top of the blade and cut like that. Um, the way I practically use a knife, and I mean, practically in practical uses in, in, in that sense of the word is I hold it a little bit more loose. It sort of sits on my finger t fingers like that. My, my index finger is still in the groove, but it can go from this knuckle to that knuckle. And the rest of my fingers are a little bit looser and the pressure comes between my index finger, maybe a bit my second, second finger and the top of the blade. And I'm not pushing down hard. I'm just kind of light on there or like this. And I tend to have a looser, a loose grip. Again, the, 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 the notch, my, my, this knuckle goes into the notch and I'm, I'm a bit on the side and I'm cutting whatever, uh, some cord or rope or, or whatever. And, but my grip at the back is looser. So, so with that said, um, I compared my uh, experience in holding the knife, both in the sort of this, this, um, <laughs> demonstration mode where you grip it tight. And then the way I use it, uh, which is a little bit more use, uh, loose and, and, and how it feels in the hand. So I compared, um, you know, uh, plain, uh, 21, plain 31 and micarta 21. And I will speak about what I think about the micarta 31 would be like at, uh, in a minute. Um, but I will tell you my complaint is this, this, uh, pocket clip. I love it in the pocket. It, it rides, uh, unlike my 21s, when I put my 21 in, in my pocket, the pocket, it, it's, it, it, it angles itself away from the seam and I can never get it to sit straight. This 31, I put it in straight. It tucks the knife right into the seam of the pocket and it stays straight. So it works awesome in the pocket. 
two thumbs up for that. But in the hand, I don't like it. Um, and I explained in my video with my when this knife arrived about how much I like the small 21 and the way the clip sits, the tip of the clip goes right between my fingers um, and it's a, such a nice natural grip. And, you know, even if I'm gripping it tightly or loosely, it just sort of sits right there. And I have the same experience on the large, uh, even though it's sort of one finger back, it, if I do the tight grip, okay, I pick it up naturally, that tip sort of naturally fits in between those two fingers. Um, and if, as I, I grip it loosely, it goes a little bit up in my hand, but it's still, because it's, it's sort of f more flush with the handle because it's on the lock bar, it doesn't stick out as much. The 31, it's on top of the handle all the time. It doesn't budge, it doesn't go in. Um, so it's sticking out all the time and it hits it because it's not also it's also not flush with the the edge of the handle instead of sitting in in this fold it's it's hitting me in the meat of the finger there so when i do a tight grip it's really uncomfortable don't like it at all and even on a loose grip it's it rides a little bit more forward and hits me here so not a fan um so um Early on, I replaced it with a Hawk clip, uh, which I will put back on uh, at the end of this video, um, which I like much better. Totally comfortable with the Hawk, because and the key to it is because the Hawk sits flat and there's no r rising tip at the end. Um, but I put the stock clip back on a month ago in preparation for this video because I wanted to legitimately try using it for for a while with the stock clip so I could give you my honest opinion um, and have, having given it an honest uh, try. And I gave it an honest try and um, sorry, but um, no. <laughs> so I compared the three knives and I, I what I did is I tried them with the clips, I tried them with no clips and I tried them all with the hot clip. And then I ranked them how they feel in my hand. So uh, the winner uh, is the micarta. Um, uh, with a clip, without a clip, with a hot clip, um, all in all three cases, it's the most comfortable. Um, and I think it's just because it's a little bit wider, a little bit rounder because of the micarta sticking out. It adds a little bit more depth, a little bit more roundness in your hand. And the 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 uh, clip is not just um, below the the handle but it's now below the micarta so it, it even has less pressure on your hand um now uh so in all three senses that one wins so i can pull that one out and say what about the plane okay a plane 21 versus a plane 31 well um with the standard clip uh i give the edge to the 21 uh because again it sits flush with the edge of the handle so it sits in that groove of my fingers uh, where my fingers meet my hand um it's it doesn't stick out as much and and the tip sort of goes you know it's it's just more comfortable but the, again let me be clear this is my hand um everybody else's hand is a little bit different so you may have a different experience this is my opinion um and the 31 yeah i've already discussed it just the least comfortable um whether i'm loose on it or tight um now without a clip the 31 wins uh and with the um the hawk clip the 31 wins even though with the hawk clip um the hawk clip is is completely um into the handle because it's on the lock bar i don't find it riding up top uh on the 31 it makes much difference because it is flat so um the 31 beats the 21 uh with no clip or with a hot clip and i think it's because of the front end here because they're while these chamfering changes are subtle they do make a little bit of a difference especially the way i use the knife when i'm holding it like this uh, with that with that last knuckle in there and i'm i'm kind of doing my vegetable or cutting cutting a cable or whatever it is um so overall um 
that's my my uh, opinion on the ergonomics. And I already spoke about the operation of the lock bar um, as well. So um, <laughs> that's 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 everything I have to say about the clip. Now, now let me just mention about my Carta. Uh, because I don't have a Micarta or an Inlaid 31 yet, I can't say definitively, but I, I, my guess is that on a large, um, I'm not going to find much difference in the ergonomics afforded by the inlay because on the large 21, when I first got it, I was, I was a bit surprised compared to the smalls that I'd owned before it, how, uh, much flatter these inlays are it's just because they're they're bigger they rise to the same height above the handle as on the small but they're wider and flatter so whereas on the small i get my fingertips into the little groove between them and they provide a little bit of grip yeah. on here it's not as much and and there's much more flat surface to them so i think with the single piece flat inlay on the 31 there's not going to be an appreciable change to my grip uh but um, uh, I already spoke that the 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 plane is actually more grippy than the micarta as as far as uh, now I've heard when you're wet the micarta gets much more grippy I haven't used the knife wet so I don't know but um, it's not an issue I mean I've never had a knife fly out of my hand when I'm using it but um, I just think that the difference in comfort in the in micarta larges. 31 versus 21 will be very very minor uh i think on the on the uh use of the smalls it might make more of a difference for me because i do rely on that that groove to sort of give me some purchase on the knife um but like i said have a look at eugene's video it'll be linked it'll be linked down in the description he'll compare the larges with my carta um okay this video is going on forever. Uh, I think I've covered everything. The only last bit I'll talk about is the lanyard uh, chamfer at the back. Um, and I will just compare it to my small 21 because this has been in my pocket every day for six months or all, nearly every day. And you can see on the 21 with the flat uh, handles around the, the, the lanyard, the lanyard is starting to fray. Uh, it's starting to get worn because it's rubbing up against that flat surface uh, and that edge can can cut into the to the cord. I mean, that's six months, maybe a week more to go. But you can see there's there's like little threads hanging off of it and it's wearing. Um, so I think that in practical use, the those little chamfers are going to save some wear. I think maybe they could be even longer. Um, because you can see like the edges are still sort of hitting the, 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 the loop of my paracord is sort of hitting the point at the end of the chamfer, depending on where your lanyard sits. But these are minor considerations and probably the next video I'm going to do uh, is installing my Jekyll to Hyde backspacers on these. So um, that problem will go away. Um, but that's it. That's my impression after four months of the 31 uh, and 31 versus the 21 in practical uh, uh, experience in my hand and, and use. Um, I'm going to stop the camera. Uh, I will put my Hawk clip back on my 31 and then I'll just do a quick wrap, wrap up. So back in a second. Okay, I'm back. I've got my hot clip back on the knife and uh, I'm so happy. <laughs> After a month without it, I put it on, I hold it in my hand and it's like, ah, that is so much more comfortable. It makes that much of a difference. So uh, I know this was a long video, but hey, I'm a storyteller, not a knife reviewer. And uh, I also like to be accurate about my opinion and uh, uh, and about what I talk about and, and um, so I can look back on this in years and, and remember um, what this was like, this experience uh, with the things I collect and the things I like. Um, so um, I'll try and wrap up now quickly, but uh, if there's one thing you take from this video is like if you, you try out a Sabenza 21 or 31 and you don't like the feel, you know, the feel of the stock clip in your hand, um, Try the hawk. I mean, here it, it rides sort of, it sits half on the handle, half on the lock, but um, 
because it's flat without a turn up at the end, uh, it's just flat in the hand. And you can see, like, it just rides flat in my palm no matter how I hold the knife. It's just so much more comfortable than having that stock clip uh, with the upturn uh, digging into my hand uh, and no relief by, by sitting on the lock bar. Um, so, yeah, really pleased with that. Uh, I have had the, the, the end of it catch once. I said it in an earlier video somewhere that it didn't catch and, and, and uh, I didn't believe it was a problem. Well, it has caught, so it does make me a bit alarmed. Uh, I may try one of those lynch clips, but those are, again, they're milled, but they're a bit further out from the knife. And I like the it, it, it just feels so much better uh, with this sleek, flat clip in the hand. It's like the comfort level just goes up uh, by an order of magnitude. Um, so, what is my final verdict after owning uh, and operating a Sabenza 31 for four months uh, compared to a 21? Well, um, I don't like these wishy-washy reviews where people say, oh, get one with inlays if you like inlays and get one without if you don't. I'm giving you my honest four-month opinion is I prefer the Sabenza 21. Um... There's a lot to like about the 31, and there's very little... Uh, I mean, they're both excellent, excellent experiences. I'm going to continue to to carry this. This is my celebrity, Canada 131. I love it. Um, it's not going anywhere uh, out of my possession. It's, it's still going to be in my pocket. Um, but if I had to choose right now, uh, this week, I would choose a 21. And, and my main reasons are... Um, yeah, that lock stick problem just still bugs me and it's still there. Um, I mean, four months and I don't know if you can hear that, but I can. And it's, it's just something that bugs me and I know it's going to go away. So I'm going to feel better. I mean, like I said, this knife, when it was new, I couldn't even move the lock bar and now it's, it's smooth as glass. It's there's no friction. It feels like between the titanium lock bar and the and the steel blade. So I know this is going to work itself out, and I'll feel better about this. But to me, right now, if I had to pick up one and take it with me, because it would be the one I'm going to carry, um, you know, uh, for the next month, I would pick a 21. And uh, and also, I just find a little bit more pleasure with operating the lock, uh, that double click. Um, so I will give you the wishy-washy answer that if you're, if you're, uh, you know, if you want to pick up one or the other, you're not going to be disappointed. The use of either is, they're extremely s similar. Being a collector that owns a lot of these, and I only own 131, and this is the only one I've been able to base my opinion on, I would choose a 21 over it today in May of 2020. If you ask me in June, that might change, but that's my honest answer. So there you go. So I've chewed up like an hour of your life. Uh, thank you if you made it to the end, I appreciate it. And the next video will be back to more, less research, less detail, a little bit more fun, a little bit more storytelling. Thanks again, and thanks for coming. So long for now.